Hello family, my name is Corelia Mae Sanger and I'm here today to share with you a wonderful videotape of my great grandmother Corelia, whom I'm named after. I'm, an, I'm named Corelia Sanger because my daddy wanted to name me that. He wanted to name you after his grandmother? Yes, he wanted to name me after his grandmother. Okay, and um, do you, the, this video was taken? No, no, I was not born then. It was in 1985. The 19, this video was taken in 1985, before I was born. Some of the audio is missing from this video, so while you're watching the video, I'll be reading from um, Helen Corelia's autobiography that she wrote about some pieces of her life. Okay.
yeah, farmhouse that we moved to after my mother was left a hundred dollars and Mr. Parr found out about it and he didn't rest in peace until he had sold his farm to my mother and dad. So then we moved out here after, the, I think it was our second summer at the castle, and this was called the old farm. And uh, it was really desolate then. We had to go through Albert Tibby's land to get here. There was a road, but it was often flooded because kind of Kelly's Lake that Albert Tibby had on his land would overflow, and the, lake, uh, the road wasn't much good. So we lived here for a couple of years. We called it the old farm. And in the summertime, my mother used to make cottage cheese and homemade bread. And my sister and I would take it to the castle to sell. And then uh, we lived here one winter and my teacher from the country school, I remember, came to visit us, and I was so proud of that. Now this part here where the fireplace is has been added. That isn't the original house. That has been a new addition. The original house is what you see from the front and the, on the side past the, cat, the farmhouse. And what about the dead cow? Oh yeah, the dead cow. Well, when we first came here, my mother, my uncle gave us some chickens. He brought them, and then one morning, we were sleeping up there, and it snowed during the night. We woke up; our bed was all covered with snowflakes. So then, Mom moved us downstairs. She also closed the kitchen that was in the back of the house, where this new uh, addition has been added. And we just lived in three rooms. It was the bedroom my mother and dad had. And then the what was the dining room we made into a kitchen, a living room, and a general place to live. And then the front room that was supposed to be the living room, my sister and I had as a bedroom. Okay, how about we'll go take a look around the house now? Oh, that would be fine. Then okay. you'll see where the, the graveyard of our departed animals are. Okay. building uh, where Cunningham is, it used to be our old restaurant that Tom and I operated. What was it called? Mary Jane Restaurant. And uh, we built the building, remodeled it, and upstairs were doctor's offices, and Cunningham has that now. Dr. Sternberg was there, and there was also uh, an apartment and dance studio for Athley Roost. She had her dance studio upstairs, too. Okay, while well, you tell me, I'm going to take a look at it, okay? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, well, there isn't what? too... Okay. <laughs> well... There's the old bank across the street for the tower plot. Did you just have to go there to get your money for that the restaurant? That used to be our bank. We, we traded theirs ever since we were in Michigan. That's our old bank. Huh. It used to be called the Holland City State Bank. Really? The Holland City, City State, State Bank? Bank. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. well, how about we'll go to your house now and finish this movie up. Okay. So I have some important questions for you. Okay. We're back in my little cottage up on uh, Lake Nakatawa, owned by my son, Stephen and his wife, Delphine. It is a beautiful day and we have just returned from the old farm where I lived as a There's child. There's a view from your house. Yeah, isn't that pretty though? Oops, All my bad photography for me. Yeah, take it off. Okay. 
Yeah. And uh, from our house, the farm, which you saw on the Rio Pass, why we moved to Makatawa, where my mother operated the Bayview Hotel for seven, seven years. And from there, we went to the Mary Jane Inn, which was the old Makatawa Yacht Club, and she was there for, I think, three or four years. And from there, we went to the uh, farm. We bought a farm. We had uh, also had bought two cottages and sold them. And there's a lot of history in between. But uh, eventually, we moved to Holland. That's good. Okay, then. And then uh, the years passed. I worked at different places in Holland. I worked at the theaters and I worked at Montgomery Wards when they opened up and I worked at the Holland Furnace Company in their office and different also as cashier at the theater for quite a few years. And then uh, my girlfriend, uh, Ethel Marcotte, who was Ethel Whitcomb, introduced me or uh, uh, through letters got me acquainted with my husband Thomas or Tom as we always called him and uh, I wrote to him for over a year before I met him and then he came to Holland and then where was he from? from uh, Olivia, Minnesota. Mm. Bird Island or Olivia, we, they lived on a, a two acre farm, 200 acre farm in Minnesota. It was really nice out there. And uh, eventually we were married. And how old uh, were you then? How old was I? Mm -hmm. I was 30 when I married. And how old are you today? And now I'm 80, 84, 84, this is what, 1986? Yep. I'm 84. I was born in 1902. So uh -huh. I'll just have to just subtract too. And then, uh, well, eventually we moved back from Minnesota. We lived in Minnesota when we were first married. Then we came back to Holland and we operated the Mary Jane restaurant. Which we operated on the north side of River Avenue. Then we built the new restaurant on the south side and we uh, just operated that uh, from 1943, November, to November of 1946 when my husband was uh, injured. He was working in a defense plant part-time because that was during the war and he was thrown from a car and injured. So from 1946 until his death he was a semi-invalid. He he'd lost his smell and taste and he could only speak brokenly. It was hard to understand him. And we lived on 9th Street. You know, how many children did you have then when he got hurt? We had four children. And that's Skip and... Skip and Mary, Tommy, and Wade. And Bob was born later. And, uh, oh, let's see. Um, we lived... My aunt had left me the house on 9th Street. We moved there before Tom was hurt. We, and uh, then after he was hurt, we eventually were able to sell the restaurant. And I... And as we had owed Tom's mother the $4,000 that we had left after our of the sale of the restaurant, we had to give her. And so
So I started taking in rumors and borders. And that's was this during the Depression years? Yeah, Five that in? was during the Depression years. Because Tom was injured in 1946. And uh, so to all of those years until he died. And the, the children were quite... Uh, Tom died well, in 1968. So it wasn't too and, much uh, to worry about. But I still continued with my rumors and borders. Skip was in high school and or was he in college by then? He must have been in college. Anyway, it doesn't really matter, but I'm making this tape so as to leave to all my children, my grandchildren and my great grandchildren, a remembrance of their grandma and great grandma and also mother. Uh, years pass so quickly that we are gone before we realize it. So here's looking at you kids. And 